and welcome to Maker Monday with the Warren County Library System. Uh, sorry for the delay today. They are paving on Route 94, which is where I'm located. I'm hoping that most of the sound has died down at this point, um, but I guess we'll make the best of it, right? That's kind of the motto for 2020 is let's make the best of it. Anyway, my name is Sandy Roberts, and I am the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. And every week at 2 p.m., I'll be here all summer long with Maker Monday, where we'll put our creativity and our skills to use to make something new and fun and um, exciting. So I hope that you join me every week. Um, I am paying attention to comments on the video, so if you have any questions, feel free to just type those in, and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, today's project is really fun. I had dad on the mind here. So it is a little pouch, a little gadget pocket made out of an old tie. Um, and it just uses a little ponytail holder to hold it closed, a little button. And it's a really great sewing project, even for a beginner. And uh, for those of you that may not be beginners, these whip up really quickly. So they're really easy, fun gifts. And they'll fit certain smaller cell phones. They will hit uh, fit you know, obviously coins and, and um, money. You could put in a lipstick um, for our, our older crafters. Um, it's also great for just a packet of Kleenex, you know, stuff like that. So um, these are really multi-purpose. Obviously you can buy ties at any thrift store or you probably have some sitting around the house that aren't being used anymore, aren't being worn anymore, that you can transform into something fun that is useful. So let's talk about what we need for our supplies today. All right, obviously we need a tie, your standard um, tie. It does not have to be anything fancy. I should have ironed mine. I made a mistake there. I should have given it a quick ironing this morning. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter, silk, synthetic. If you like the pattern, you're good to go. So you're gonna need one standard tie. Put that over here. You're also gonna need um, a pair of scissors, okay? Um, Decent sewing scissors are best for this, but anything will work if, if you try hard enough. Um, you do need to cut through several layers, so definitely I found that the, the better, sharper scissors are, are good for this. You're gonna need some thread. Ideally, you wanna match your thread to your tie. I'm gonna be using high contrast thread so that you can see what I'm doing today. You wanna definitely try and match it, unless you like the look of that stitching, in which case it's your, uh, your pouch, you do what you want. Um, we do need, of course, needles. I'm going to be using um, a larger um, eye needle just because I am using an embroidery thread. Um, if you just have regular thread, that's going to be fine. Just double it up. Um, and pretty much any needle that you can get your thread through the eye is going to be just fine. You do want something a little on the sharper side just because you're, again, trying to get through several layers of fabric to sew. Um, and you are going to need a bit of elastic. Like I said, I just used a ponytail holder which you can get fairly easily. But if you have a little bit of elastic, you're gonna need about three inches for this project. And again, try to match if you like um, those things. You will need a button, about one inch, okay? It can be two holes, four holes, doesn't really matter. But you do want something a little bit on the larger side. Um, and lastly, this is optional, but some straight pins. I found that with the slippery fabric, it's definitely helpful to have a couple pins to hold things in place. Oh, and I lied. I forgot kind of the most important things, a good ruler and a washable marker, because we do need to do some measurement for this project. So you're gonna want a ruler that's preferably over 12 inches and just your basic washable marker, again, or chalk will work, whatever, just to be able to mark a line for cutting. So those are our supplies for today. Uh, if anybody has any questions, again, feel free to just post that in the comments. I'm just taking a look, make sure there's nothing there. Um, okay. Let's get started on our crafting. I'm gonna just switch views over to my document camera. Here we go. Now, as you can see, I've already got my tie here. And I, as I said, I just totally forgot trying to get stuff done today. Uh, totally forgot to go ahead and iron my tie. That would have been a really good idea, but we can make the most of it. So I'm gonna get my ruler and I'm gonna get my marker. And I'm gonna adjust this a little bit because we're having a little bit of a camera issue. Okay, I need to measure 12 and a half inches from the point of the tie all the way up. So 
I'm going to go ahead and do I know I'm a little bit off camera here, so you're just going to have to kind of trust me. Take my marker or my chalk. Get my 12, 13. Let's see. Right here is my 12 and a half. I'm just going to mark that. Then I'm going to take my ruler and draw a line across. And of course, we're using washable materials so that if you want to, you can hand wash this and um, remove that mark. Okay, moving these out of the way. Now I'm going to get a good pair of scissors and I'm going to give this a cut. Try and get nice and straight there. Right through those go. This you can save for another project. Tossing it away. Okay. So I'm going to be working for on the inside first and then we'll flip around to the outside. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to fold this down and we're going to sew it into place so we have a hem. So I'm going to grab a couple of pins because as I said, this tends to be a little bit challenging. We just want to fold it a half inch, which I have a mat for. You're going to need to use a ruler perhaps. And there we go. That's about a half inch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't, uh, don't drive yourself crazy here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple straight pins in, watching my fingers hold that in place while I hem this. And you know, if you don't have straight pins or you just prefer not to use them, you don't have to. Some people actually will just use a bit of uh, masking tape uh, to do that, and that's fine too. Whatever works for you. Okay, now let's talk needle. Uh, as I said, I'm using a needle with, I'm gonna zoom for a sec. Ooh, that's ultra zoom. That's too far. Camera did not like that. Okay, so this is your basic common needle. But you can see it's got a fairly open eye there, okay? It's got a good point, not so sharp that I'm gonna hurt myself, um, but sharp enough to get through multiple layers of um, the fabric. Um, for me, it was just most important to have an eye that was large enough to get my embroidery thread through. Now, I'm using two strands of embroidery thread at a time. Um, I like to basically uh, cut off about a yard worth to work with. You don't want too little because then you're going to have to constantly be tying off knots. You don't want so much because it'll get tangled on you, uh, especially embroidery, certain embroidery threads that can happen um, if they're not like coated. So I usually do about a yard, which is hold the thread to your nose, put your arm straight out, straight elbow, and that will give you eh, approximately a yard. Sorry for the weird camera stuff, but oh, come on. I really need a document camera, but I'm using an old video camera from 1997 and it's not thrilled about this. All right, I am just going ahead and pulling two, two threads from the six of my embroidery floss. Um, like I said, if you have regular thread, no problem, just thread it onto your needle and then um, double it up, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle this is tough for me because my, uh, <laughs> so funny story, I got sick right at the beginning of March um, and ended up having to be tested for COVID, it came back negative, but I just had eye surgery and I need new glasses for my new prescription, but because everything's been closed, I have not been able to get new glasses. <laughs> Tomorrow I finally have an eye doctor appointment and who knows, maybe I'll be able to see soon. Wouldn't that be just lovely? I'm uh, Actually, I don't think I've ever been so excited about an eye appointment in my life. Um, and hopefully I won't need another surgery. We will see. All right, I did it. I got it threaded. All right, there we go. We're gonna leave a nice tail, okay? Because we don't want that to come back out. Then I'm just gonna tie a double knot in the bottom here. Some people are really good at this. I'm not one of those people. That's okay. So just gonna go ahead, one knot, Depending on the weave of your tie, the fabric of your tie, you may want to do a third. I'm finding with mine, one is doing just fine, or two rather. Okay, now then. This is pretty simple. 
Okay, we're gonna do what's called a running stitch. It is the easiest stitch. So if you have not sewn before, it's very simple. I am gonna be, um, like I said, I'm using a very high contrast thread. Normally I would find a gray to kind of match. And I'm gonna be making fairly large stitches just so they're cl clear on camera. You may want to make you know, smaller stitches that will be a little more hidden. So I'm just gonna come up on one side from the inside out, right? I'm gonna pull my thread all the way through. I'm not gonna pull so hard that I pull that knot through though. And then I'm gonna come down the other side like that, leaving a little bit of space. Like I said, I'm gonna go fairly large, but you wanna go something about that size. So maybe, what is that, about a quarter inch? Okay, that's fine, that's gonna hold just fine. I'm gonna do the rest of my stitches larger just to get them done so that we can move on. Um, it's going to drive me a little bit crazy and I'm gonna just be okay with it. You want to do your best to make your stitches nice and straight. If, you know, oh, see, look, I tangled my thread because <laughs> if the video camera's old, you would be amazed at how old this thread is. Um, kind of using whatever I can find in the basement at this point, folks, to, to do these classes. Oh goodness, it's gonna give me trouble. I am not gonna be able to get that knot out. So I'm just gonna leave it there. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> if that happens to you, just back the, uh, back the stitch out, tr you know, clip it and start again. Um, if it was newer thread, this, like I said, this thread is, is really tangling on me today. You would be able to more easily take that knot out. But between me gardening and not having fingernails so well at the moment and very old cotton thread, Sometimes tangles happen, that's life. All right, like I said, I'm going much too quickly here. I'm not happy with my stitches, but I'm just demonstrating. So I'm going to give myself permission to be okay with imperfect stitches today. And we're just gonna put a nice line of stitches all the way across. And one last one, come back in. Okay, now we're gonna tie it off easy to do. You're going to bring your needle under one of these stitches here. Okay. And now you're going to hold the loop. Hold that loop. And oh dear. I probably should have found better thread. All right. This is what I get for trying to upcycle. You see, so you're going to hold that loop and you're going to bring your stitch, your needle around and go through the loop and pull it down to tie a knot. And I usually do that two or three times to make sure it's nice and strong. You don't want that knot coming out because then your whole seam, your whole hem will come off, come apart, and that's no fun at all. There we go. It's just hard to do in front of the camera. Okay, so that's it. We've got that sewn. You can remove your straight needle, straight pins. Um, by the way, if you did end up with a situation like this, okay, what you could do is clip out the knot and then just tie it really tight against the fabric. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, but uh, that's what you could do. All right, zoom it out so we can see what we're doing. So we've got that piece kind of done. All righty. We are now going to what are we going to do? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> All right, four inches, no, two inches, two inches. Let me grab, I'm just gonna grab my uh, diagram here. I do not want to make a mistake. So give me a moment. Um, this is why we always kind of plan first, right? Okay, where are we? And wrong side, half inch, flip the tie back over onto its right side. Right, okay. <laughs> so now we're gonna measure two inches from our sewn edge, okay? So that's an inch, two inches. Again, you may be using your um, ruler. So we're gonna place our button here, okay? Two inches, yeah. I don't know, it looks really close, but we're gonna go with it. Okay, 
two inches. Where's my thread? Here we go. We can go ahead and tie ourselves a knot again in the back of our, in the bottom of our um, thread, end of our thread. Okay. And so what you're going to do is just kind of hold your button in place. And from the opposite side, you're going to push your needle up through the buttonhole. Are you coming through? No, this is giving me trouble. Coming through quite a few layers of fabric here, so give yourself a moment. This is being the label, I think, is right behind this, so it's giving me a little bit of trouble. There we go. Got it. And you want to do your best to try and keep it centered. I'm going to zoom in again. For you. I know this is can be a little challenging sometimes. Okay, so I've come up through one of the holes. I'm going to cross over like that. I'm going to come up next to that in this hole and I'm going to make a nice little X. And you're going to want to do that five, ten times because you want this to be fairly sturdy. Um, you don't want your button to get, you know, to pop off on you. I'm not going to do it quite so many times, simply to save a little bit of time for this video. And there we go. I'm just going to do two. Like I said, you would do five to ten. You want this sturdy. Now, I'm going to come up from behind one more time, but I'm not going to go through the hole. I'm going to come up behind the button. Okay. I'm going to wrap my thread around the stitches I just made. And the idea here is to give a little bit of space between the button and the fabric so that when you use it, um, it's a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to go back down into the back. Ta -da. Okay. Here we are. Again, I'm just going to find a stitch, slide my needle under that stitch, and through the loop to knot that off. Okay, and again, you're gonna, you might wanna do two or three times. I'm just gonna clip it here, again, just for the sake of time. Okay, now, we are gonna flip the tie over and we're gonna fold up four inches, okay? So, we want this to be about four inches. One, two, three, four. That looks about right. Now, to zoom out for you, you will notice, okay, that because the tie flares, okay, it's not gonna line up perfectly. So it's really up to you if you wanna sew in along that edge or if you just wanna start here and sew straight up. It doesn't really matter which you choose to do, it's really just what's comfortable for you. I do suggest, again, because these fabrics tend to slide around, you may just wanna throw a straight pin in to your project to keep everything in place. And I'm just gonna do that on the other side as well. Now, if you're someone who doesn't sew, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. If you wanna make this quickly, you can probably do it with hot glue if you're careful. Um, it's not gonna be as strong, of course, and uh, you know, but Hot glue does work on this relatively well. Not for the button. The button you're going to have to sew. There's no way you're going to get out of that. All right, new piece of thread. Thread my needle. Let's see if I can uh, if I can get it quickly this time. Maybe not. I might have to admit that I'm uh, 45 and should be using a needle threader these days. I don't feel 45. Okay, I uh, got it. And I'm gonna just tie this off again to knot. And I'm just gonna show you how to do the one side. And normally I wouldn't leave it open, but again, once you see it done once, you totally will understand how to do it. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and use our running stitch again. And we're gonna come from the back. Now, if you wanted to hide the stitch, 
you could come in between can you see what I'm doing there okay come in between the layers that way that little knot is going to be hidden okay but it's it's up to you and down from my running stitch and again same thing as before we're just going to go up and down you can even once you kind of get good at it you could do a couple stitches load a couple stitches onto your needle at a time running stitch is one of your best stitches to know it's kind of a great all-purpose stitch it'll solve a lot of those life's little problems for you you can do a lot of crafting with it and again I'm making my stitches quite large simply for time you're gonna to want to take a little more time make your stitches a little neater make them a little smaller um, you know ask your grandma I'm sure she she has pride in her stitches or she may maybe not I come from a sewing family so um, and I used to do quite a lot of embroidery so I tend to be a little more persnickety about my stitches but for today I will let it go right as the song says let it go I can't sing I can sing everybody can sing that's a human thing I don't sing all that well but I sing enthusiastically okay just putting in our stitches and like I said you're gonna do this on both sides um, and most of it's gonna be hidden under the flap so if it isn't perfect it is definitely not the end of the world don't don't worry about that this is a great project to learn on because like I said it's pretty easy to find oops look that was a terrible stitch <laughs> um, pretty easy to find ties out there in all kinds of colors and patterns um, you could even go ahead and decorate the tie further if it's more solid you might want to put a little patch on there or you know something like that that'd be really fun okay you get a really decorative button all right I'm gonna come demonstrate that needle that not again I would normally do it on the inside but then you can't see it being done um, there you go right on in loop it around and make your knot okay so you do that both sides all the way up okay but I'm just gonna jump to the next step just for the sake of time I've got my ponytail holder and I've got the top of my tie and I'm just gonna kind of see where I want to attach that right get a sense of that okay and there we go now this a little tougher to uh, pin into place I suppose you could um, pin that just uh, not necessarily easy you need a longer straight pin for that and there we go got my knot got my thread and again we're gonna want to hide the knot so I'm gonna come from inside the knot and just like we kind of did for the button we're just gonna go over and under we're just gonna put you know and again here's a spot that you're gonna want to go five ten times to get that stitch in really well that way your loop doesn't come out you're gonna want to spread it a little bit so it's um not all just at one point you can see I'm kind of hope you can see I know I don't have great lighting either sorry guys I'm doing the best I can um, with whatever equipment I can find in my basement <laughs> um, and I guess I'm lucky to have it so I just did three there but again you'd want to go a couple more um, come on up one last time and you're just gonna go under one of your stitches oh, under one of the stitches and again loop around the back and tighten it down really old thread and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that and trim this now if you don't have an old tie you could do this with felt you could do this probably with um, a variety of materials same basic measurements right okay there you go and that goes under and you've got your little pouch just trim any of your extra threads there okay 
So there you go. One gadget pouch that you can use for all kinds of good things or put your Kleenex in there or, you know, all kinds of little treasures. Um, they're really useful. They're very simple to make and you can get really creative with them. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. And I know that that was a pretty quick demo of how to do that. But if you have any questions, you can always email me at srobertswarnlib.org. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I will be back again, actually in just a little bit on Zoom with a computer coding class, Animate with Code. On Wednesday morning, I'll be back here on Facebook with Lego lovers. We'll be sculpting with Legos. Um, then we've got an introduction to Scratch Junior for our preschool coders. And on Friday at 4 p.m., I'll be here with Friday Steam and at 5 p.m. with Tool Time. Um, so I hope that you come on back and definitely I'm just going to put up our website here because if you go to our website and go to our event calendar, you're going to find so many really, really great programs that we're offering this summer. Make sure you join our newsletter as well so you get updates on some of our best, you know, most exciting programming. But we've got a magician, we've got animals, we've got book clubs, gaming clubs, story times, all kinds of great STEM. Um, so just a ton of different programming that we're trying to bring to you virtually through different ways this summer. And of course, curbside pickup has begun. So make sure you watch our instructional videos on Facebook and YouTube that will lead you through how to go about that process. Um, in the meantime, my name is Sandy Roberts. I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. I miss you all. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. I can't wait to be back into the Makerspace with you. But in the meantime, Take care, make something fun, and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.